This is Commando Podcasting right here, man. Welcome to the Three Gun Show, episode 111. I'm your host, Dave Harmon. And my guest this week is Team Cobalt Kinetic Shooter and self-described old guy in the sport, Kalani Laker. But before we get into the interview, I want to thank you for downloading and listening to the show. The Three Gun Show is a weekly podcast where each week I bring you an interview featuring one of the many awesome personalities in Three Gun. And we talk training, gear, match strategy, funny stories, and just generally have a great time. If you like the show, there are multiple ways of supporting the podcast, including using our affiliate links when you shop at Brownells, Amazon Cabela's, <laughs> Cabela's and Optics Planet. Just go to threegunshow.com slash support for the links. And a quick reminder, if you listen in real time, registration for the 2017 Colorado Three Gun Championships support, uh, presented by Burris Optics opens up February 6th. Sign up at Soco3Gun.com. That's S-O-C-O-3 gun.com using the code 3GS2017. And not only do you get to shoot the match, but you also get entered into a drawing for a prize package from the good folks at Odinworks, including a handguard of your choice, a magazine release, plus a shirt and a hat. Now I'm throwing in a, uh, a three gun show t-shirt and a laser edge magazine as well. That gets us up to like over fi- uh, $350 worth of cool gear and uh, it could be yours just by signing up for the match using the code 3GS2017. In this interview, Kalani and I cover everything from the most expensive habit that he's ever had to the people and companies that he credits with growing the sport. And then we get hardcore technical and break down practical shooting into six areas of focus. This interview with Kalani was a long time coming. He's been on a couple times uh, already in uh, in various formats, but we've been trying to get together for an in-depth interview for quite a while now, and I'm so excited that it happened the way it did because this turned out great, and uh, I hope you think so too. So enjoy this one with Kalani Laker. Welcome to the Three Gun Show. We are sitting in the Venetian, I think? It's a Palazzo. It's a Palazzo. We're at the Palazzo, whatever the heck that is. We are in the uh, the middle of SHOT Show 2017. And I'm sitting here with Kalani Laker. Yes, sir. My my new BFF. <laughs> we uh, we had this uh, this friendship that arose from a hurricane at 2016 Three Gun Nation Nationals, where Kalani happened to win the national championship. I did in I Open. Did. Yes, I did. So uh, congratulations, Kalani. <laughs> Thanks, man. It was and, awesome. And welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. I've been, I made some appearances here and there on some team yeah. interviews, and uh, I helped uh, uh, help with some of the broadcasts for the uh, championships, and it's always been fun. And I, I've been waiting for years, for years to uh, have a little solo time with uh, with my boy Dave. Dude, I'm, I'm so pumped to have you here. You know, I got a lot of feedback from the uh, the Three Gun Nation Nationals, and of course, some of that feedback is Kalani's awesome. You need to have him on, and I was like, I know, we got this. Don't worry about it. Just wait. <laughs> And here we are. Yes, we are. We are really excited, uh, really happy. Um, I want to make it a little different. We had some dinner beforehand. We had we a, did. a pregame dinner. Uh, we have a during game drinks right now. Yeah, we are. So. Uh, we got a little bit of little bit of whiskey and a little bit of uh, tastes like some Coke in of, there. Some kind of mixer. Yeah. Cheers. Yep. Cheers. Yeah, I was telling you a story earlier. Uh, when it comes to mixers, I was celebrating my buddy's 39th birthday at a whiskey bar. And I'm okay with whiskey. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a lightweight still. I like I like the clear drinks. I like the vodkas. But uh, I was watching my buddy slam whiskey, and I it, it it amazed me. Right? People are good at certain things. Right? <laughs> right? Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a gift. You just gotta find what it is. And I said, dude, are you mixing that with anything? I mean, can I get you a mixer? And he goes, yeah, I am mixing. I'm mixing it with air. And I said, how can you mix that with air? <laughs> I was like, okay, you know what, you're a beast. I'm not, and that's that's awesome. So I proceeded to you know drink my pina coladas <laughs> at that point. <laughs> uh, too much. Yeah, you've got to know your limits, and uh, yeah. and brown alcohol is that limit. So Kalani, um, I want to give. We've got a lot of listeners. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people listening to the show. Most of them probably know you from Three Gun Nation, but for those who don't, let's take it back a little bit. 
and uh, give folks an idea of who you are off the range. What do you do when you're not shooting? Sure. I mean, I can give you my bio if you want. My Sarah, last seven-year bio. Um, well, seven-year. Let's. Why go? Why stick with seven? Why <laughs> well, ages are off limits. So oh, I am. Okay. I am. I am a. I am a uh, young, virile male Hawaiian. <laughs> uh, I was born and raised in Hawaii. I moved to uh, to Phoenix area in Arizona. Um, about uh, 2009, I got into shooting. I got into pistol shooting a little bit. Um, I actually got into pistol shooting just to get experience because I did want to shoot three gun at the time. Uh, so I had an army buddy call me up one day and goes, hey, do you still have your AR? And I did. Um, I had two AR-15s. There, there were two Bushmasters. Uh, they, had the clean, <laughs> they had the clean muzzles at the time. I bombed during the assault weapons ban. Oh, no. And uh, I bought my first one. Actually, the first AR I ever bought was a Colt Green Label at the time. I, I don't know what that meant or, or what that means anymore. It's fresh. Yeah. yeah, so it was a green label. It was all super expensive, and I bought it. I never shot it for maybe two, three years, and uh, finally I said, you know what? I need, I would like to shoot this gun, but I, I kind of bought it as a collector's item. Actually, I think I was wrong. I think it was a blue label Colt at the time, and so I sold it, and with that money, I bought a Glock 17. I bought a Bushmaster 20-inch, just some, you know, clean clean muzzle brake or, or, or clean uh, clean barrel had a removal carry handle on it, um, had a, an A1 stock or A2 stock on it, um, and then I bought an Xbox and Halo. <laughs> That's what I bought. <laughs> and, uh, and boy, I wore out those Xbox controllers a lot faster than I wore out that 20-inch. Uh, um, and that was back, I can't remember, whenever the Xbox came out, so 2000, 2001, something like that. So fast forward to 2008, 2009, um, I brought it out of the mothballs, and uh, my buddy says, hey, come out and shoot. I said, all right, cool. So I rolled down to Tucson at the time, which is about an hour and a half drive uh, south of Phoenix. And I went to a match called Axe. It was ACTS. I think it might still be around. Huh. Um, but it was a two-gun pistol rifle. I went there and I won. And it was, it was crazy because uh, um, I've never been very uh, – I've never been good at, uh, like, basketball, football, you know, any, any of the stick and ball sports. But I was really good at shooting. So I played a lot of ba- – paintball when i was younger when i was in you know early college uh, high school stuff like that uh, kind of semi-pro traveled mm-hmm. all around the, um, the west coast and played paintball so when i <laughs> when this guy when my buddy drug me to this match um it was weird uh it's kind of this you know kind of the my i worried about two things i worried about hitting the target and moving as fast as possible to the next position to shoot the next targets right so I was literally well, running from paintball. You're getting shot back. I did. It's exact, exact, yeah. exactly. So I, I, you know, the horn or the buzzer would beep, and I'd go bang, 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 and then I'd run to the next to the next posi- shooting position, and I'd slide into it like a paintball slide, like a, like a baseball slide. Get up, and I, I tore my. Je- I remember I tore my <laughs> jeans. I was in jeans and like a like a DC shoes shirt, right? Back then, because um, I was really, I was really, I was really involved with the uh, with the motorsports at that time. So I traveled around, did a lot of. Um, uh, I was a sponsor of a lot of motorsports, um, uh, freestyle riders and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, so I had a whole bunch of DC shoes apparel. <laughs> I think I, I, I ripped that shirt up too. But I won just based off, uh, you know, being being fast from pos- right. position to position. And I, I wasn't very accurate, but, you know, you just shoot until targets engaged or uh, you know, are neutralized, I guess. And uh, so I went down there for the first four months and won every my first four matches ever. Couldn't believe it. I thought I was I thought I was God's gift to shooting. I mean, I, I, I said <laughs> this is so easy. I'm this is gonna be a you know walk in the park. And then my other buddy up in the valley said, Hey, you know, you know, you're doing really good. You need to go to Rio Salado. And I was like, All right, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll go there too. You know, I'll, you know, I'll, you know, I'll go smash faces over there. Even closer, dude. I get crushed. I I go there, and I just get. I get so annihilated and beat down, and uh, it's what I tell people nowadays when I travel, and they're like, "Oh wow, dude, you know you're from you're from Mesa, you know you should you should at Usury and or you know Rio Salado," and I was like, "Yeah," I said, "It's a it's a gauntlet. It's a it's a nowadays." So I'm gonna digress a lot. Digress, bro. All right. So we got all kinds of time. Nowadays, um, I think there's a lot of hot spots of shooting, but back then, back you know eight years ago, Mesa was 
was and still is a gauntlet of shooters. I, I, I mean, I mean, I think I think at, at that time when I got into the shooting sports, there was more GM per capita in that area than than anywhere else in the in the in the uh, um, in the nation. So, why do you think that is? What, what uh, makes good that? weather, good okay. weather, and good laws. You so. can shoot all the time. You can shoot all the time, and there's really no restrictions. I mean, you again, we also have more full auto guns than than uh, you know per capita than any other state in the union. Oh, no kidding! So we just man, we we shoot, we shoot, we shoot, and uh, so I went out there, and so oh, I'm sorry. So like I said, you know, nowadays in my travel, people ask me, you know, what I've done and how I how I got good. Well, I got good through straight up hard work and sacrifice. There's 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 nothing else. I mean, I, I spent all the money I could on. Uh, I've I've huge mistake boxes in my in my garage, and there are holsters <laughs> and guns and gear and ammo and just all this stuff that I thought was going to work and 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 it didn't and it just in the end it does after so much heartache and money spent and uh, and and time loss um, I found out that it really is just hard work and sacrifice you got to sacrifice time uh, to get good at anything whatever it is. Um, so anyways, again I digress. People would ask me, you know, about about Rio Salado and and what it's like there, and I said, dude, it's 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 crazy. Um, if you go there and you give it six months, okay, you're either going to quit, you're done shooting, or you're going to be decent. I mean, you will be an A class shooter anywhere in the nation. I mean, you can go and compete anywhere in the nation um, if you give Rio Salado six months. Mm. So um, it's cool, and I mean, I've seen I've seen people, uh, uh, I've I've seen amazing champions come out of come out of the Arizona area, and I've seen a lot of people quit. I've right. seen a lot. I mean, well, every single one of my friends that, you know, I get into it, like, oh, this is great. This sounds really fun. You know, so I probably had 8 to 12, 15 friends come in, and they just get crushed. They just get crushed. I mean, it's, it's not that I protect them. I protect them mentally. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm there patting them on the back saying, hey, it's okay. You know, we'll change this, and, you know, you'll be better next time. But uh, I think what happens is that they just realize that they're just not good. Right. And as, as men – as men, we come out of the womb thinking we can we can drive great, we can shoot great, and we can other do stuff other great. stuff really great. <laughs> and, and that's just that's just not the case, man. It just it just isn't the case. And so you do have to work at it. And I think I think that uh, guys that come come into Rio uh, thinking that you know they're great shooters, they just get they get beat up, and they're like, oh, right. you know what? I'm gonna go shoot dirt. You know, I'm go back and shoot what I do, what I shoot best, which is rocks on a <laughs> on a on a mountainside. So yeah, it, it there definitely is something about putting it on the clock, and then uh, you know now in practice score or on the score sheet back in the day, and and actually legitimizing who is the best. Mm -hmm. That is such a humbling experience for for people, and then you know there there's a certain set of people that will take that humbling experience and turn it into like a fight a need to get better and to want to progress in the sport and then yep. there's a certain number of people who are just like you know uh f this i'm gonna go back to my xbox yeah yeah and, and and you see that all all over the place so uh you know you have you got some parents that will introduce their kids to a multitude of sports and they'll like they might like soccer and they or they might not you know and they'll just jump across from you know soccer to uh, softball to football or basketball or whatnot um and luckily at that young age they're given that chance to kind of see what they like uh you know what they're good at what they might excel at you know you know in the future um i didn't play too many sports i played football and that was it because that's where all, all right. the chicks were that's you know everybody <laughs> that wore letterman jackets wore football you know you know were uh, uh played played football and um, you know, we got out of school early on certain days, on game days and whatnot. And so I played the football game. Um, I, again, I had zero hand-eye coordination at all, man. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I say I played Xbox, and I was, I'm, I'm horrible at Xbox. I'm, I have no problem admitting that. And, and that's the thing, too, now. I mean, I, mean I, I, I think one of the things that has got me to where I'm at today is uh, being able to uh, self-analyze my strengths and weaknesses and uh, I am humble. I mean, I mean, I'll tell you right now. I am not. I'm not the fastest shooter, the, the fastest mover out there. I'm not the most accurate shooter. I'm not the best weapons manipulator out there. I'm not the best on on uh, on, on camera or on um, or on podcast. But uh, you know, I played my strengths. Um, I've got a good smile. You know, good attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and you know, best um, smile out there. Yeah, you know, I, I I try and protect my brand as much as I can. Um, try not to. Too many things that you know that 
that stupid, but uh, uh, I'm super honest with myself and with 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 everybody else. So, so Kalani, we we uh, we dove into like the first little tidbit, the mm. iceberg that is your sure, sure. shooting yeah, career, yeah, like 2009. Going. So, I know you. I guess let me let me say like I first became aware of you because I know you mm -hmm. in a bunch of different mm -hmm. aspects now, but I first became aware of Kalani Laker as mm -hmm. uh, as a three gun nation shooter, mm -hmm. and I want to say it was when you were um, a member of Team Stag Arms. Yes. So what does that put us like? 2011. That's 11. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's 2011. Yeah. So then uh, what I did was uh, 2009. I shot. Uh, I thought it was great. You know, I had I had survived the gauntlet of Rio, um, and I wanted to travel a little bit, so I saved some money up, and I shot uh, like the three. At, at the time, there's only about seven or eight majors yeah. in the in the nation a year. Um, so I shot nationals, uh, multi-gun nationals in Vegas. I shot Rocky Mountain in New Mexico, and I shot Superstition. Uh, 2010 came along, and I was like, all right, you know, I, I did pretty good. I think I was, like, top 20. Um, at that time, top 20 was really good. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, I don't know. It's so it's so, it's so so watered. I think the, I think the, uh, the amount of matches have kind of watered down um, what, what you're seeing in the results nowadays. Um, I can tell you, for me, uh, Tech Ops, you're – you need to go for top five. If you're top five, you're you're a badass. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you got to be one or two in any of the other in any of the other divisions. So right. if you're running open, um, I run open. Uh, if you're running uh, irons, if you're running uh, heavy metal, you know it's 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 definitely one or two. So no tripods. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No tripods. Oh, okay. No problem. No, I understand. That's odd, huh? It's probably a tripping hazard. Yeah, it's probably huh. a tripping hazard. That's fine. Hey, thanks for telling us. So, Kalani. Yeah, buddy. I just learned something here. You cannot have <laughs> a tripod on the palazzo. Yeah, let's. I let's, thought we were about to get this. shut down, so. and I was trying to, uh, <laughs> I was trying to keep talking just to to make them like <laughs> carry me out or something. But uh, it turns out their only objection, we just two security guards, right, mm -hmm. just came up, mm -hmm. and they f they hand waving attacked guy. Yeah, and uh, w which is our sound guy. I had my shirt off. I was ready to rumble. I thought yeah. we were gonna drop dogs. Well, you you meant you mentioned the affliction shirts earlier, <laughs> and. So so I knew that some shit was about to go down. <laughs> but it turns out you cannot have uh, I just hit my knob. It turns out you cannot have a um, tripod on yeah. the Palazzo. That is weird. That is odd. Any tripod. tripod. Hand-waving offense. <laughs> I've just learned is a hand-waving offense on a tripod. But guys like sitting here holding the, uh, the recorder himself, no problem. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, uh, so, that's okay, what happens, so man. This is this is this is commando podcasting. Commando right here, podcasting. Man. So let's let's back up a little bit. You mentioned that um, that uh, the talent pool has been watered down by the number of matches. I think so. I think I know what you mean there, but maybe you can explain a little bit what you're what you're uh, talking about. Okay. Um, well, as I was getting to the sport, okay. So there's there's essentially three eras right now that I've been involved in in three gun. You have the Dark Ages, all right? This is the Medieval Ages. Uh, that's when I started out. There's about seven, eight matches. Uh, 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 and, man, I hope, hope I don't hurt feelings. And I'm only going to hurt people's feelings if they look into this thing. But So um, let's just say that, like, our intentions are only good right here. We're just talking about, like, the facts as you see them. Yeah. I'm and not, not – our intention is not to tear anyone down or anything, right? No. Yeah, <laughs> not, okay. not, Perfect. Not, not really. Hey, you know what? I got – we got a very important guy that comes by here. Shane, how you doing, man? How are you? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, man. Yeah, I am. I'm doing a little social media work, doing a little bit of podcasting. All right, brother. Take care, <laughs> man. Shane is uh, one of the uh, good people in the sport, man. Good. Shane Naylor, good guy. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, you had these, you had these, so you had these, you had these uh, dark ages, and then you had a company called Three Good Nation come in and uh, try to uh, – 
try to give their input to the game, try to try to standardize it almost because it was it was essentially at that time it was eight or nine outlaw matches with their own set of rules. Uh, Three Gun Nation tried to bring the top the uh, the top talent into one spot, and they tried to get rid of all the uh, gimmicky, circusy uh, targets and stuff like that. And uh, I mean, dude, I've shot upside down out of a parachute before, and right. that is not a test of shooting talent. It, it it just isn't. I mean, at that point, the the moment that you uh, uh, infuse luck into a shooting uh, performance. Um, the results will will uh, reflect that, um, and when I was top twenty, I was like, "Dude, give me that luck factor, you know? <laughs> you, know you know, I'll take that. Maybe, maybe I'll maybe I'll bump in the top five that match, you know." Um, at this point in my career, I don't want that. I want I want uh, targets in front of me. I want um, I want no games. I want I want just you know, how fast and accurately can I um, accomplish this stage at this point. Uh, I still enjoy the circus matches. I really don't mind those at all. Um, but <laughs> I let everybody know that this is a circus match, and, uh, you know, the results will reflect that. So, anyway, so Three Gun Nation huh, came into okay. that. And, uh, boy, man, it was crazy at that time. Uh, um, I think there was an influx of money um, into, the, into the game of Three Gun at that time. Um, so we're talking like 2009 still, tw right? Uh, 2012. 2012, okay. So that makes sense because we just went through one uh, administration mm -hmm. of someone that we thought was going to take our guns, mm -hmm. and now that we person survived that. Yeah. survived that, and now mm -hmm. that person has no sort of next re-election on the line. Mm -hmm. They're going to double down. We all think we know that, and so now there's this influx of money into the sport. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think, the, I, I think the influx of money came from the um, – from the uh, from the uh, grandeurs of television, so right, right. Uh, <laughs> oh, brother, dude. So and again, now we got John McClain. Yeah, let me recap this. So we are right outside <laughs> the the nicest whiskey bar in the Palazzo, probably on the Strip, and there's just people walking by us constantly. And now we got my boy John McClain, Asian sensation, my friend. <laughs> John, good to see you, man. Good to see you, so, uh, anyways, yeah. So. After after that yes. that run, uh, t you know, I think Three Gun Nation um, brought a lot a lot to this game. In fact, uh, I hope it's okay. I'm gonna take one second to thank. I think I think there were companies in this game uh, around that time, from 2012 to 2013, that or 2014 that that has brought us um, the game of Three Gun uh, to where we're at today. Um, okay. Um, there's a huge influx of new shooters. There's a huge influx of shooters that came in during that time. That's when I came in. And there is, uh, you know, there's, there's. I guess nowadays I'm an old dog, which is, which is so weird to think about <laughs> that way, man. It's so weird to be. I, man, I love being the underdog. I so wish, so badly wish I could be underdog again. But um, that's all done now. Um, now I just gotta, you know, something we talk about later is the is the whole mental game. You sure. Know? Uh, being the underdog, it's easy. <laughs> it's the easiest thing you ever heard. It's the same thing. I, uh, if you don't do well, oh well, it's expected, you know. Yeah, but if you do well, no oh, hey, you, you know, there's a bunch of you know claps on your back and stuff like that. But um, one thing I've learned through all the trials and tribulations of my life, um, and I'm not going to bore the audience with that. Uh, I'm, everybody has their hard luck story. Everybody does. Um, mine, unfortunately, some of it was on TV because I was on Three Gun Nation. Yeah. And that 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 was hard. That was really hard. So I feel like I've kind of grown as a person. Um, um, in front of the three gun, you know, in front of the three gun crowd, and it's it's been difficult. Um, but so, I did want to thank some some companies that I feel are 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 pivotal in um, in the growth of this sport, or was you know in the growth of this sport. And that's sure. uh, my biggest one is FNH uh, USA. Um, they're not too big in the sport anymore, um, which is too bad. But FNH was uh, FNH, and especially um, their VP, their VP at the time, uh, Ken Fowl. Um, every time I see Ken, every time I see Tommy Thacker, every time I see uh, Mark Hanish, I shake their hands and I thank them. And I said, "You guys have gotten this sport where it's at today. They are definitely one of the main main players. Uh, those guys were just amazing and uh, put a ton of support into uh, guys like me. I've, I've never been sponsored by them, but." Um, they, they have bled and cried and worked extremely hard uh, to get.
to get the sport where it is today. Uh, F and H, uh, my old my old company, Stag Arms, uh, DPMS, uh, Federal Munitions, uh, Remington, MGM Target, uh, MGM Targets uh, are everywhere you look. And mm-hmm. I think Travis uh, over there, uh, if he is still an unsung hero in this game, it's a shame. Because that dude probably works harder than anybody else I know. I do not want his job, and I will never want his job. <laughs> and uh, he is an amazing dude, and he works extremely hard. And um, if he doesn't, if, if he ever has to buy dinner ever for himself, I'd be upset. Uh, that man should get his dinner bought for him every, every single night that he's uh, away from his house. Uh, Surefire, uh, JP Enterprises, uh, and there's a bunch of uh, accessory companies like uh, Samson. Uh, Samson's wonderful. Uh, Scott over there is just, uh, again, he was a pioneer, I think, in um, seeing the vision of growing 3-Gun, uh, getting 3-Gun out of those, uh, what I feel, again, is the dark ages. Um, yeah, that's it. Sorry. Didn't, no, didn't that's get, totally cool, dude. I, I, and I actually don't think, other than MGM, um, is only, you know, like, like I said, I, I don't want there to be any bias. Um, I think MGM is the only current, uh, you know, sponsor that I might have that um, of, of, of those list of companies. But those companies were really big back in 2012, 2014. Um, they're amazing companies, and I always thank them every single time I see them. So, and everybody else should, and that's a problem. I mean, thank you for giving me this avenue of reaching out to this three gun sure. audience because uh, a lot of them just a lot of them don't know. I mean, I mean, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, they just they they just weren't there. Well, know? for a guy that's coming into the sport or a gal that's coming into the sport today, you know, they can't be expected to know what happened before them. And that's one of the cool things about the show is we can always talk to, mm-hmm. you know, shooters that have been there and done that and see the the type of uh, experience that, that was there. But, yeah. you know, w- one of the things that, that you mentioned when you talked about those uh, companies is all the people that are at the top that saw that vision that supported the the uh, the sport. And, yeah. you know, I, I think it all, all comes back to, like, the the love of a few people – Mm-hmm. for this game and then they throw their company's support behind it sure yeah you will so you make a great point in that so when three gun nation has had this idea of uh doing the uh, pro series okay they took they took the top 50 shooters that they felt were uh, i mean you could shoot your way into the pro series um that they felt and then and they would try and put them on an even or on a level playing field well, unfortunately you had like uh, guys like uh, mike voigt mm-hmm. um jerry Mikulik, and clean up church and they're straight open shooters okay yeah and now these boys got up got to run with the guys that have been running uh uh, uh, uh you know tactical equipment for four or five years or you know you know their whole career mm-hmm. and so now you got you know jerry and 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 clint um you know we can loading you know uh, the old school we can loading yeah. and uh I, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I snickered. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, dude. You know, <laughs> you know, bad life choices, right? But take that. Um, but um, you know, I mean, because they did. I mean, in fact, I had, I had a, I had a conversation with them with Jerry and I think it was James Darst. Uh, Bruce Pyatt was was in at the time too. Uh, I mean, oh man, dude, you had all these, all these top shooters at that time. That it was just, it was amazing, dude. The pro series was just so hard. Uh, I, I felt it was hard. I felt it was, it was just sick. Right. You know, and we had a lot of guys at that time come in and just get washed out within a day. It's like, sorry, man. I mean, you think it's cool. You think it's fun. But I'll tell you right now that half of us are in the truck crying. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We're sitting there just, you know, just shedding tears and, and uh, you know, trying to figure out how we're going to call the you know, woman at home and tell her that we lost again. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it, was, it was definitely tough. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think there was a lot of sacrifice back in those years. Um, and, uh, oh, and I – I'm sorry. I should have thanked Three Gun Nation too, because they were they were really a um, a uh, the vehicle for uh, really advancing Three Gun um, to the proportions that it, that it's at today. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I'm at Shaw Show, dude. I'm at Shaw Show as a freaking Three Gunner, man. Yeah. Well, and you know, like we uh, discussed during dinner, that's how I know a lot of uh, a lot of the three gunners that's how i chose like the first people to be mm-hmm. on my show is mm-hmm. people that i had seen on nbc sports outdoor yeah. channel whatever they were on at the time on three gun nation i knew them as three gun nation pros mm-hmm. so it's uh it's they definitely did build the uh the careers and the like you said the brands mm-hmm. of a lot of shooters yes and uh i think that they're um, I think that there is definitely 
a lot to be said about the game now, post post Three Gun Nation integration. Yeah, yeah and that's even in the outlaw matches, you see a lot yeah. of a lot of things being instituted that, like you said, more equity base, less mm -hmm. less gimmicky, mm -hmm. less. Uh, oh, you didn't see that target we hit mm -hmm. over there? Har har har! You yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I think I th so. That's that's the third era of the three gun that I've been in is I, I'm, it's not post three gun nation, but it's, it's, it's post three gun nations, you know, starting influence in the game. Mm -hmm. So you can see it spread. Um, um, and I think, you know, that combined with, uh, social media has definitely changed the game. Sure. Um, uh, that's, and that's another point too, that we can bring up. Oh my gosh, we're just going to digress like crazy. Um, <laughs> you look at the, um, the speed at which shooters are able to come into the game and uh, um, and Excel, um, that was unheard. Dude, I'll tell you right now, brother. There was there was like when I got in, <laughs> when I got into the sport, there was Brian Eno's forum. Yep. And uh, there was I think like maybe two videos on YouTube. That was it. That that was all. Um, on YouTube, there was something by Kurt Miller and Mr. Weekend at the time, and um, there was a video called. Uh, God, I don't know if it's still on there. But it was a European Rifle Championships, and it had uh, had Dan, uh, Dan Hor uh, Daniel Horner, Robbie Johnson, uh, Kurt Miller, Kelly Neal. Oh, dude, someone's going to hate me for not mentioning their name. <laughs> well, all I did when I got into the game was I watched that video over and over again, and I critiqued their stances. I critiqued their uh, you know, weapon usage, how, it, how they set up the rifle, um, how they engage targets. Uh, I was really analytical, and I, and, and I still am. Um, and then you got on YouTube, and uh, not YouTube, but you get on uh, Eno's forum, and every day it was like, God bless Pat Kelly and God bless Kurt Miller, because those two dudes, they gave of themselves and their knowledge to uh, dudes like me. Yeah. I mean, we had no idea what was going on, man. Uh, there was, you know, you had your top 20, and if you want to break in that top 20, it was tough. I mean, I know that when I started, I know from the time that I started till 2013, uh, there was maybe like three new dudes. I mean, that was it. There was there was not many wow. many new shooters that would come in. And then you know, you fast forward to you know mid 2013, 2014, where you all of a sudden you have an an, an influx of super fast dudes that um, you know that's kind of what I did at that time <laughs> when I got into it. But you know, they use their speed. And then they were able to collect all their knowledge on on Enos or YouTube or social media. I mean, nowadays, I mean, I can't I can't open up IG without without seeing a new drill or right. without seeing some dude, you know, saying, oh, look how fast I am with shotgun, blah blah blah, hammering and it shit out like that. Oh, dude. Well, you know, the the cool thing though, Kalani is like we as shooters and just you know like society in general, like we build on the shoulders of giants, right? Mm -hmm. So the the Pat Kellys and the uh, uh, Eric Miller's, mm -hmm. Kurt Miller's, Kurt yep, Miller's, yep, yep. the uh, you know those guys before us, they pioneered all that stuff. Mm -hmm. They taught us the way. Mm -hmm. We get to refine it, make yep. it better, do it our own our, our own way. But without them, you know, we wouldn't be where we are. Like just look at uh, you know, Jansen Jones, Rob Romero. Uh -huh. So yep. I've got both the uh, Noveski videos on DVD. Mm -hmm. I don't have so a DVD player, but I still <laughs> huck them around. <laughs> so, but. Th those were gold, man. Those, those were, were gold. gold, and so those were the th the that was the type of information that I had when I first started. Sure. And I watched those again and again and again, just like you said, you watched that YouTube video. And the cool thing now is that people can learn from you. People can learn mm -hmm. from other guys in the sport that learn from Robin Jansen stuff like that. Yeah. It's just like the amazing thing, and we just get better and better as as a sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. I mean, definitely the skill level has. Man, I don't know. I'm really pessimistic. I don't think the skill level is raised. I think I think just the uh, the uh, uh, the techniques have just been dumbed down to the point that uh, you know it's a non-issue, and it it is so mental nowadays. Uh, right. Oh, okay. So for instance, shotgun loading. I <laughs> I can remember going to a local match and and praying for a 16 round shotgun stage. Oh yeah. Anything anything yeah. past nine rounds, I'm gaining. A second or two for every four rounds loaded at anybody in the state of Arizona. I laughed. I know. <laughs> and, and it was great. And, and uh, 
you know, that, that weekend shotgun skill didn't come easy. I, I, I spent, I think it was like three weeks every day, every day, two hours a day. Mm-hmm. It got to the point where I can hold the gun up, and I would, <laughs> I would get on my knees in front of my couch and hold the front of the gun up just, just to keep loading, you know, just keep practicing hmm. the, uh, the, uh, uh, the weekend Just the load, action of so. the loading, yeah. Oh, man, it was just, it was just, I mean, that's, and that's, that's what I did the first 18 months of my shooting career was, uh, you know, um, I get my family in bed at 9 o'clock, and I go out to the garage, and I dry fire for at least an hour, two hours. I mean, if, if I was feeling great, you know, yeah. then I, I, just, I just keep dry firing. And, um, you know, you never see a improvement that day that you dry fire, but you see it maybe a week later, you know. Um, so what, what was it, Kalani, that drove you to, um, to do that, the dry firing, to put in that work at yeah. that time? I think, I think, I think anybody, anybody at the top of whatever they do, um, they're willing to sacrifice time. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said it's, 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 it's hard work and sacrifice. And uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, you hear all the cliches, you know, all the, you know, this guy's competitive. This guy has a type A personality. Um, um, I am, I am competitive at certain things, and uh, uh, certain things I just don't like. I'll tell you right now, dude. I suck at I suck at Call of Duty. I'm, I'm, <laughs> in other words, I'm a straight up, I'm hashtag camper when it comes to Call of Duty. <laughs> so if I jump on Call of Duty, I, I, I'll be like, hey, dude, I'm gonna be in the corner and I'm just gonna sit there and do nothing. And then hopefully someone goes to my scope and I'm gonna you know smash them. Then I'll run over there and teabag them or something, you know. But <laughs> but I, I I don't have the skills at that game. That's just what it is, you know. And I get I got into uh, you know the individual sport of three gun, and uh, I excelled quickly early on. And then I got then I just got beat down to the curb. And at that point, you know, I had that choice of saying, you know, I mean, do I want to dump money into this game or do I want to dump time into this game? Um, at this point, I know I'm not the best. You know, I know I'm not the top. Uh, should I go play pool? You know, I mean, play darts or cornhole or whatever. I mean, I, you know, I you know I, I could have had anything at that time, but just something something about you know the the gear whore in me you know yeah. loves loves three guns. So. <laughs> well, so so tell me about that feeling. W- what was going on in that time when you thought, you know, maybe three guns not for me. Maybe I'm going to go shoot pool. Sure. Maybe I'm going to start uh, ballroom dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean. So for my career, I came into it at the top, and then I get I get beat down because the first four matches, right? They yeah, first shot. four okay. matches I shot, I win. I, I and I, I I ran away with it. I mean, I ran away to the point where, like I said, I'm not very good at street basketball, but holy crap, I could talk smack. And so, <laughs> man, I left that range just pissing people off, and, and it's like, dude, I can't be your professional. What? Because I just crushed you, you know, um, and. Yeah, I just talk a lot of smack. And I really enjoy being good. You know, everybody likes what they're good at. Yeah. Um, so then I move, uh, you know, over to Rio Salado, and um, it's, it's eye-opening. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm beat down. I'm calling my friends, you know, in between stages saying, why am I here? You know, are you guys out drinking right now? Because I'd love, I love, I love to go watch a football <laughs> game with you or something. And um, I think for me, maybe it was – Maybe it, was, maybe it was that glimpse of, of, of greatness, you know, and, um, and it just really drove me. And I said, you know what, I, I know what to do. Cause, and that's the thing, too. That's the thing with, like, uh, with games like uh, with, with all of these high-level games, um, it can all be broken down into, into really manageable skill sets. And uh, that's really what I did was I was really super anal about it, and I broke down practical shooting into six different aspects. And, uh, you know, depending upon uh, – the match I was going to, or depending upon where I was deficient at, that's what I'll go train on, or that's what I dry fire on, um, and it just became an obsession. An, an obsession. I think. I think every, it, it's really funny because we talk about it. Uh, you know, me and my buddies, uh, or me and my shooting buddies talk about it. Where, dude, everybody at the top is is kind of kind of weird, man. I mean, all of us have just a little quirky yeah. personality, for um, sure. And I think it's that quirkiness that I, I think if we're all just super mellow, then. Um, didn't care. Well, we wouldn't be at the top of the game. I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you do have to care, and not, not only that, but you gotta, you gotta put yourself into a position where, man, you get humbled. You know, I, I, um, if, if if you're afraid to, to uh, um, you know, face defeat, then you'll never, never be able to push yourself or put yourself into a position, uh, you know, you know, to succeed. So I'll tell you right now, when I when I freaking win, I win because I'm a badass. You know, <laughs> and if I lose, it's because I make mistakes. 
And right. uh, and I mean, I will, uh, you know, I go to bed easy at night, every night. Close my eyes. I'm like, yeah, I did, I did what I could do. I maybe didn't do my best, but I did what I could do, you know. Yeah. Well, Kalani, so. you said you break down shooting into uh, six different aspects. Mm-hmm. Yep. Can you tell us what those six different aspects are? Dude, this is a secret sauce. This is like this is like KFC's, you know, special seasoning. Oh man. I know. Better so make could, sure the tape is rolling we here. We can we can charge per per listen Let's or do something. It. Should <laughs> we tease that and then put that behind a paywall? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, years ago I did break it down. Um I actually I actually wrote it down just for this. Um, so what I did was I break it down into um, six different aspects of practical shooting, and again, that can be that can be broken down. Uh, you know, whether it be three gun, whether it be IDPA, IPSIG, USPA, pistol, uh, hunting, uh, LE, uh, dot mill, self defense, home defense, uh, whatever it is. But there's pretty much six as- aspects for me, and um, in order of importance, you have accuracy, you have weapons manipulation, you got target transitions. You got entry, exit movement, uh, shooting on the move, and then positional work. Those are the six. And so, uh, again, you know, back a long time ago when there were distinct outlaw matches, each of them asked or called upon uh, a certain aspect. Mm-hmm. So I think the easiest ones to kind of uh, – nowadays, I think for, for current shooters, uh, you could put Rocky Mountain as a positional game uh, versus something like – Multi-gun nats or superstition um, as more of a uh, target transi- transition game. And so uh, when I go to superstition, when I'm prepping for superstition, dude, I don't do any, barrico- or any barricade work. I don't do any prone work. I don't do any of that stuff. I do, uh, I do shooting on the move. Um, not really. Actually, that's a lie. Um, I do target transitions, stuff like, uh, you know, V-drills, uh, stuff like... Uh, what does Haley run? He runs a one to five drill. Actually, Keith just did that one to five drill on uh, Instagram. Um, so I do a lot of a lot of just just trying to get your target speed up. Uh huh. Um, and I do a lot of entry and exit movement because especially something like superstition, um, superstition and MG Nats, you're gonna have targets appear and disappear uh, depending upon your position. So you want to be able to you know have the gun up and ready to shoot as you enter that position. Yeah. And then you need to get out of that position as as soon as you're 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 done solving that problem at that position, uh, you need to get out of there. You're wasting time. Every every tenth of a second, you're you're still there. After you've neutralized the last target, uh, it's just a waste of time. So, uh, but versus Rocky Mountain, dude, I live on the ground. You know, I live on the ground. I live by trees, barricades, couches, uh, cars. I mean, whatever Stairs. it takes. Yeah, dude, all the wonky positions that. Uh, uh, you know, Rocky Mountain is going to put you into so um, two totally different games. And I, I like I don't practice at all. Like when I go to Rocky Mountain, I don't I don't do any shooting on the move. Um, rarely do any entry exit. So it's all at it's that all point. I do a lot of yeah positional yeah. and a lot of accuracy work. So yeah. that's that's what I do. So that's how I break it down. Um, and then when I train people, um, I got you know essentially I, I have six drills. Um, each one is going to be biased towards that aspect. And I just kind of go over all of them, all of it with them. Um, I do a little bit of videotape in the beginning, so I have them run a little stage that kind of covers all six, and then uh, I can show them, hey, you know, you're you're uh, deficient, or, or 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 you're not so good here on this aspect, and you're better here. So we're not even gonna worry about that. Let's let's worry about all the ones that you're really shitty at, and mm-hmm. we'll knock those out first. So okay, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the aspects. That's the secret sauce. Dude, if you do that, I mean, you can go out there and just have, like, shooting masturbation and just shoot, you know, 300 rounds of pistol every day at, like, I don't know, an MGM half ipsic at 25 yards. And, and that's cool, dude. But it's good for Instagram. Guess what you're doing? You're doing accuracy. It's true. All right, so now you're deficient and, you know, the five other aspects. So so if, if people broke down their own shooting um, skills into, in, in, into, into those sections, um, I think they would, uh, they would, they would benefit more from, from their uh, practices or their dry fires and stuff like that. So what does your, your practice schedule look like? If we had to go like a week in the life of Kalani, we know you have. So I got two. I got, I got, I got two practice schedules. Okay. Um, when it's off season or when I'm, if I don't have a match within two weeks, then I will get out to the range whenever I can. Um, and I mean, it could be every day or it could be once a week. Um, my first, my first, my most important thing that I do, no matter what, before I train at all, Make sure my guns are running. 
Make sure your guns are running. Make sure they're zeroed, however you want them to be zeroed. Um, and if I can't zero them in one day, then the next, you know, range day is going to be right back there freaking on my belly zeroing guns again. I hate it. I, I, I can't stand it. I'm so past that. I'm over that stuff. Yeah. I, I hate changing ammo. I want the ammo. stuff to just stay there and then yeah, not dude, have to worry I just, about it. Again, it's just, just, it's just another aspect of shooting that you don't want to have to worry about. Um, um, and then, uh, again, so even, even nowadays, uh, uh, you know, depending upon the match I'm going to go to, uh, it depends upon what kind of drill I'm going to run that day. But I usually only run one or two drills uh, a day. I'll go out there. Um, I'll time my guns. So I'll go out there and I'll just like do a mag dump. Um, just make sure that my dots tracking correctly. I'm 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 feeling good about my trigger and everything. So I just make sure that I, that, that I can run my gun um, as fast as I can run them. Um, and then I'll knock out a drill. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll set up two simple drills. So I might set up an ac an accuracy drill, and then I'll set up a uh, barricade drill. And I'll shoot, you know, 100 rounds from, you know, of accuracy and then 100 rounds of barricade. And then at the very end, I'll put them together and I'll just kind of run a, essentially just run a, a, a mini stage. And then I'll run them backwards. So I'll run like, you know, barricade drill first and then I'll run accuracy drill. And then I'll switch it up and I'll do accuracy drill and then barricade drill. So right. that's pretty it. Not too bad. Um, going, into, um, going into a match, I try and hit the range three days in a row. So going to a range, uh, uh, the or going to a match the first range day, which I call the tr it's a it's a train ups, um, train up leading to the match. The first day, uh, I'll shoot. I'll try and shoot at match speed. So, which is uh, uh, you know pretty much deliberate hits. Make sure I get all my deliberate hits. The next day I go back, which is usually like I, again I do this when I get three days all in a row, and that might be a week before a match, or it might be three days the three days leading up right right before the match. But I try and get them all together. The second day I go in there, and I just, like, ape shit. I just go nasty. So at that point, I'm just going for speed. Uh, I'm barely seeing sights. <laughs> um, uh, uh, my feet aren't placed correctly. I'm um, usually on, you know, one foot, leaning out of the box, and just kind of throwing rounds at a target. Uh, and I go crazy there. And it's humbling, but it also lets me know where the red line is. And then I go back on the third day, right before, I mean, it's the third day. It's the last day I'm going to train up. I go back, and I do a deliberate. And I, mean, I sit there, I just make sure I pound every single A and, um, you know, hit every single long-range steel or, or, or every flying clay. I mean, I make sure I'm, I'm, I'm on the sights, riding it hard. Um, and uh, that's the speed then I want to shoot in a match. So get all your hits. Kalani, you talked there about, like, some, uh, some concepts of, like, different speeds mm -hmm. in your shooting yep. do you see like a time where where it's like something clicked in your head of like this i'm now like a, a different type of shooter than i was like i i have reached yeah something that that mm -hmm. i would consider proficient i i i think so um i think i know what you're talking about um when Isn't i do like a moment when it clicks is like like what well I'm yeah asking. okay yeah. sure well, so i i, I can think of two moments that I was actually both shooting a Glock at the time. I remember when I was dry firing, I had a, uh, I had maybe 15 targets just strewn across the walls of my house. And, um, and there was one really big transition from the living room to the kitchen. And as I was transitioning from the last target in the living room to the first target in the kitchen, um, I actually threw a mic dry firing. I stopped, came back, and I made sure I pressed the trigger, you know, you know good, good side trigger on, on the target, and I came and I finished the stage. And uh, anyways, um, it, it blew my mind. I called all my buddies up. I'm like, holy shit, dude, I missed. I freaking mic'd and freaking dry fire. It's like, what are you talking about? I was like, dude, I'm honest. You know, I'm on my sights. It was sick. And I just did it automatically. Um, yeah, that, so that's, that's one moment. I was like, wow, okay, I've reached a different level, a different mental level. Huh. Um, and then one time I was shooting a thing called Tuesday Night Steel at Rio Salado, which is like the largest, longest running weekly match in history. I think it's probably going on 25, 30 years now. Wow. They get a minimum of 140 shooters every Tuesday night. Every Tuesday 140 night. 140 shooters? Yeah, dude, it's sick. That's like a major match. That's what I'm saying, man. You go there, you get busted up all the time. Holy you cow. Get, you get straight crushed. Um, uh, it, was, it was getting late to the evening. It was dark, and I couldn't see my sights on stage three. I went to stage four, and I made all my hits, and it was a great time. I, you know, I didn't win the stage. Uh, again, I'm not... I'm not the best shooter. I can keep it together, though. And uh, on that last stage, I was a shot just lights out. I, 
it, it felt great. And uh, I got off the stage, and I turned to my buddy, and I was like, holy crap, dude. I have never seen – I felt like I was – like, you know that, that artwork of the chick on a bomb on the side of, a, like, a B-52 where she's <laughs> riding that bomb? I felt like I was riding the front sight, dude, like, a, like it had a saddle on it. No shit. And, and I mean, I saw that front sight, like, clear. People all say, oh, dude, you know, I see lint on the front sight, or I see this erasions, and – Sure, it's all cool. We can all talk shit about that and say, oh, yeah, I did that, blah, blah, blah. But, dude, I saw it that night. I saw it that night, that stage. And that's something, it's, it's kind of like when you hit a good, when you hit a good solid ball in golf and you're always searching for that feeling again. And that's, that's kind of what that, what both of those feelings were. And I've, I've experienced it numerous times. Uh -huh. Nowadays, um, when I get off a stage and like Keith would be like, oh, you did good there. And I was like, dude, it was horrible, brother. I was like, I was just shooting at targets. I wasn't, you know, riding my sight. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's just, you know, that's that's the beauty of our sport is that it's it's just two two totally two totally opposite aspects. Your speed and accuracy, and they don't go hand in hand. No, they don't no. go hand in hand. And when it comes to speed, you don't want to consciously think about speed, uh, but you do want to consciously think about accuracy. And so I think I think the top. The top shooters in our sport right now, um, you can see them. Um, uh, you know, I can name them on one hand how, how good they are. And you can watch them. Or when I watch them, all they're doing is getting their hits. They're not trying to shoot fast. They're not trying to uh, um, uh, move fast or move quickly or do some kind of crazy, stupid shit like you see people do. Like all the capoeira stuff we were talking about earlier. Yeah. You know, dude, I mean. <laughs> We just sit there and get and get and get crazy and, and, and do that. But in the end, dude, it's about it's about getting your hits and, and, and accuracy begets speed. So if you do a you know, if you're watching your sights and you're in tune with what's going on around you and you throw a shot and it's a hit and then you do a your sights are back on target and you just shoot again because you know you're going for accuracy, all of a sudden that's a you know that's a, a two tenths of a second split. Mm -hmm. And you had nothing to do with speed. It had nothing to do with speed. It's like okay. Accurate shot, accurate shot, and you're moving on. And it's not like, okay, I'm going to shoot fast. I'm going to go here. I'm going to hammer down, dude. I'm going to white knuckle right, this pistol. Right. I'm just going to hammer down. And it's going to look sick, and I hope someone's, you know, you know, got their, got their cell phone rolling. Yeah, it's I've, not about that. I've never thought, like, wow, I'm going to shoot so out of control here oh, that. <laughs> you should. You have, you, you've never tried to shoot crazy? <laughs> well, you got to. Like, in a stage is what I'm saying. Like, I've never gotten to I something. Have. I'm just like, I'm going to go so ape shit here. People are going to think, like, I'm out of my mind. So, Kalani, I want to switch gears just a little bit here. Yeah, dude, We've been talking about mechanics and stuff like that. One of the coolest things that I saw in 2016, and then, you know, I've gotten a lot of feedback from it from people who listen to the podcast as well, is Thriga Nation Nationals, mm -hmm. you, me, Tommy Thacker, mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy Gresham, we're all sitting down, we're, we're chatting, and uh, Rick Birds all comes up to the table to talk to us. Mm -hmm. And you went super serious and like deep on Rick and you gave him some advice for the uh the next no the shotgun uh, yeah the next stage against uh -huh. against uh what Keith Garcia right and Keith yeah yeah and uh you said like get that first round hit get that first round yep. hit and you went like super deep and you were so serious about it like you you switched gears out of like you know commentator Kalani uh -huh. we're having a good time uh -huh. we're talking about the game here to like you know, mentor mentee do, yeah. relationship with Rick, and it was really cool to see that happen. Really cool to see that happen real time. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about the mental part of your your game, and uh, that was interesting. <laughs> tell me about the <laughs> mental part of your game, and and how you think about three gun now. Because you mentioned earlier that it was it started out being all about mechanics and now it's it's all mental. It is all mental. Um, I think well, okay. So <clears throat> during that during that broadcast, there's there's a couple of them. Um, I remember. Oh, actually, you know what? There wasn't during broadcast. So so there was two stages, you know, prior to the championships to the shoot offs. So there's like, like that little mini stage where you shot all three guns, and then there's the. Uh, what do you call the stage where they had the shock? Just, it was just shotgun only. Yes, yes. It was the uh, – uh, Like the eliminator. Like the semifinal and the eliminator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So Rick rolls up to, to me uh, at the eliminator, and, dude, I was blasted. <laughs> I was like, I don't care, man. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, 
what do you want to know, dude? And he goes, all right, Kalani. Okay, you know, so we got eight dudes here. Uh, we got to shoot seven. Was it seven shots? It was like essentially a, 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 a it was big It just like fan, a big, long right? sweep. Yeah. And I, I want to say it was like three, three, and one in the middle. So, yeah, seven. So, yeah, I think so. Was it only the top two or top four going? I don't, I don't remember. Top two were top two. going, and then the rest were going home. Roger that. So, um. No, it had to be, had to be top four. It had to be had top four. Had to be top four. Because yeah, because they took the four from the first one. And yeah, you're right. The second one. Yeah, my bad. And so I told him, I said, here's the deal. Let's just, let's just break it down. I said, I told Rick. In fact, when you have him on here next, he'll tell you the exact same story. I said, dude, two guys are going to blow their load. It's going to happen. They're going to shoot way faster than they should just because it's all about speed, which it, which it isn't. Um, the next two guys are going to mic one, and they're going to do a makeup shot. Um, so there's the bottom four right there. Don't be those bottom four. Just grab your shotgun, shoot your seven shots, dump it, hit the button. You're done. You're 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 in. He's like, all right, okay. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rick rolls up. <laughs> he rolls he rolls up to me. I was hanging out with like me, Matt Martini, uh, Andy Peterson. We were just having a blast. And uh, he goes, uh, oh man, what was the word he used? He's like, I'm just going to go stupid, man. I'm going to shoot stupid, dude. Should I just go stupid? And I was like, no, dude. No. That's, no. <laughs> no, just, just aim your shotgun. Mix your shot. So I went to this whole spiel about two guys going to do this, two guys going to do this. You know, Keith's going to do his Keith little thing with a shotgun. I mean, he's super confident. You can't even shake him from, the, from that shotgun stuff. I mean, right. that's, that's his baby right there. He sleeps with that bad boy. <laughs> that's like his body pillow. Man. Like, I got a body pillow at home. That dude. Keith's got a Benelli M2. He's got a Benelli. <laughs> I love my body pillow, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that thing, man. <laughs> and so then, uh, yeah, yeah, and he got in. So then when it was Keith and, 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 and Rick, he comes up to me and he asks for some advice. And I told him, hey, brother, I said, the only thing that matters right now is to get that first round hit on, on the rifle. I said, the rifle is going to make this whole stage. He's like, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, okay. Because it was, it, it was about maybe maybe three years ago that I realized that on every stage – there is one portion of that stage that you can lose it on. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's always one one portion that um, you're gonna lose time on. Everything else is whatever, dude. Auto drive. I, I mean, at this point, at the guys that I hang out with at their skill level, <laughs> Nick calls it "don't fall down." So Nick's like, "Hey, client, don't fall down here." I said, like, "All right, dog, I got it. I got it, man." You know, and Nick's like, "Oh, you don't got it." And sure enough, he's like, "That stage, I'll just fall down on it." And he's like, dude, "I told you." And then I got to listen to freaking Nick yell at me for a couple stages. but Yeah, you never want to have Nick Atkinson have one Nick, up on dude. you. dude. Not Nick, man. <laughs> he won't let you so, forget anything. No. Oh, no, dude. His, his, his memory is crazy. He's got a memory of an elephant. Thank you for saying he that. Does. Oh, like, it's ridiculous. So I, I uh, said that in one of the previous podcasts. Huh? Uh, I think it was like 105 or something like that. And... Nick actually listened to it. He texted me right after he listened to it, and he's like, oh, so I have a good memory, huh? I'm like, yeah. yeah. You probably listened to this three weeks ago, and now you're, telling, you're texting me like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I got to text Dave. It's like he doesn't realize how good of a memory he has. It's That's just like really second good. nature. It's, it's, it's yeah. freaking freaky, right? Yeah. Am I right? No, I'm, I like when it comes to Nick, um, I like to um, – can I get one more of these? Can I get one more, one more whiskey? Yeah, can I get one more of these? Oh, shoot. Thank you very much. Um, like when it comes to Nick's kind of guy that you want to talk to only via text. <laughs> so you can. <laughs> thank you. So you can. Uh, so you can. Uh, so you have a record? Yeah, dude. Because <laughs> I, can't, I can't compete with his memory at all, man. So, yeah, it, that's, that's definitely, definitely pretty tough. Um, but, no, I mean, I think. Wow. Okay, let's digress real quick, too. Let's do it. Uh, when, when Keith created this team. This Cobalt Kinetic shooting team. Um, I remember talking to him a little bit and bouncing, you know, he was bouncing ideas off my off 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 of me at the time. Um, I was like his uh, sounding board, and you know, he's creating this team. And as the weeks and months went on, I said, "Holy crap!" I mean, we we are like the Voltron of three gun now. <laughs> I mean, dude, <laughs> I say Power Rangers, but. I don't like Power Rangers. It's all about Voltron, man. <laughs> Voltron's so, got those Voltron. mechanical tigers. <laughs> yeah, they're like combined or lions or whatever it's they awesome. are. Also, yeah, whatever they, they come are. together, dude. And they're like sick, and I mean, I think that's what he created. And because you have such such different personalities and uh, skill sets um, on this team, and uh, I think you know, taken separately, 
it's uh, pretty nasty. But what people don't realize until after it's all said and done is uh, we're able to feed off each other. And, and, again, where Rick can come to me for – a certain amount of advice, I go to Keith, I go to Nick for it, you know, and um, well, I, go to, I go to Rick too. Um, and we all kind of know each other's strengths and weaknesses and, uh, you know, we can really use that to our benefit, you know, selfishly, honestly. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's like, hey, dude, I need this, and you have that to offer me, so, you know, give me the goods. Well, you guys are, like, super fortunate because you have, you know, there, there's an old saying in uh, business, you're the sum of the people you spend the f- uh, most time with. Or, you know, some of the, the some of the five people you spend the most time with, whatever yeah, it is. Sure. So you spend time with high performers in shooting. Uh-huh. When you guys, when you have, like, a concept that you're struggling with, you can bring it to the team, and you guys can discuss it out. Yep. And the input of your four brains is way greater than it would be of just one brain, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so y- you guys have that, that, like, multiplying power of all that experience – all, all those, all those rounds down range, yeah. and and the desire to help each other out because you're teammates. Yeah, there's, I mean, I mean, I mean, there's, there's no yes men at all on this yeah. team, as you've probably noticed. I mean, uh, yeah, everybody, everybody's if I had to like, pick a yes man out. <laughs> there's no yes men at all, <laughs> and so then um, it's crazy because I've never been more wrong in my life since I've been on this team. I'm always <laughs> wrong, and uh, <laughs> I, you know, again, it happens, and again, I'm, I'm humbled by it all the time. It's like. You know, I'll throw this great idea out or uh, maybe this great uh, concept, you know, that we might work on as a team. And, and man, they're, they're you know. Brutal. Yeah, they, they just jump over themselves to try to see who's going to slap me down first. So. Yeah. But, well, uh, Kalani, we talked about uh, good advice in, mm-hmm. the, uh, in the sport. What is some of the worst advice that you see given out constantly in our game? Um, well, boy, worst advice, that's, that's actually really good. Um, you know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That's a bunch of bullshit. That's total. <laughs> that's a total joke. That's that's one of those things that have been around forever. Um, uh, I can't I can't handle I can't handle any anybody saying anything slow is better. It, it's, it's just it's just totally untrue. What um, about slow jams? So oh yeah, I like I like me, I like, I like me some '80s slow jams or some or some freaking R and B, some hair. '90s R and B. That dude, I'm, I'm I'm pretty crazy when it comes to my, to my uh, music selection, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, even the even the hair band jams, dude. Mm. Oh, it's crazy. Like a nice man. power ballad. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, exactly. we're now we're talking. Uh, yeah, I'll listen to that too. But um, no, when it comes to when it comes to that stuff, um, I just tell people just to aim harder. Okay. You know? I mean, just just aim harder, and the speed will the the speed will be wh- whatever it is. Um, I can miss fast. In fact, I've only known two people that can miss fast enough to win, and that's Nils Jonasson out of Phoenix. Uh, you know, multiple. I think he's a world champion too now. At this point, he's he's yeah. a, he's, he's a boss. And uh, Brian Nelson. Yeah, those are the two dudes, man. I think I said that on your other podcast, but it's true because it sounds familiar. It must have been it, you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, because <laughs> it's just it's just one of those things that that happens. You're like, dude, he missed a lot, and he still crushed the other guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but that's that's definitely um, an exception, and it's always better. I mean, if you want, again, there's. <laughs> Well, I've had a lot. I've had this discussion a lot too. There's a, there's a lot of flashes in the pan in our sport, as there is in any sport, really. Um, one of the things I can hang, hang my hat on is that uh, uh, I'm mature enough and responsible enough to have, you know, been fortunate now to be in this game for, you know, going on eight years now. Um, yeah. I, I I just won national, so I'm I'm still I'm still decent at this game. Half. Yeah. Yeah, you know, right. pretty good. I got, I got, I got a four-year win streak right now with uh, Jeff Chase's Walking Dead match, um, longest-running night match in the in the nation, and uh, that's a that's a that's a tough match. It just keeps getting harder every every year, but uh, everybody's coming, everybody's coming to get me there. So I really feel the pressure at that one. Um, but I do want to hold up like five fingers at the end of this. You know, you know, this <laughs> year's match, I'm gonna hold up five fingers and just tell everybody to walk away. You know, well, at that point. Well, but. Kalani, we we. Uh we're looking at you now, eight years in the sport. You and I just had, like, some really interesting conversations over dinner. Uh-huh. Things that um, we discussed or n- weren't even, like, topics that I had even, like, considered. Okay. Uh, but they're, they're aside from the topic of three-gun here, so we'll leave uh-huh. them where they are. So you obviously have a lot of experience in, in this industry, in this game, and, you know, in, in life in general. If you could go back to... 2009 Kalani Laker. Mm-hmm. I won't ask you how, you old, how old you were then. 
2009 yeah. Kalani Laker. Yeah. What would you give? What advice would you give yourself? Um, don't have any expectations uh, at all. Uh, you know, right now you gotta you gotta live in the moment, and that means not only you know enjoying those travels that I had early on in my career. Um, I didn't enjoy them at all. It was it was literally work. I was so nervous, so stressed out uh, about having a you know a good finish or a good performance that I didn't enjoy anything. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't enjoy the match. I didn't enjoy the people I was with. I didn't realize that I was surrounded by really good people, uh, really good personalities, uh, really good food, you know, and I never <laughs> did that, man. I mean, I was, I was the dude eating at Cracker Barrel and, 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 and knocking out the fried catfish there. And Nowadays, you know, in the last, <laughs> last three years, dude, I mean, when I, when I roll out to a match, it's, you know, who am I going to room with? I, I, I didn't, like, didn't want to room with anybody either. Um, I was a solo roomie. And, uh, Is that because uh, you didn't want to be distracted from your game? I don't know. Maybe it's because I didn't want to become friends with some of these guys. I just wanted to beat them. Oh, interesting. Uh, I just didn't want them to know anything that I was doing and give me any secrets at that time. Now I'm I'm an open book, man. I'll 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 feed you with a silver spoon and uh, you know give you the golden ticket until you spit it out back at me. Then I just slap you in the face. And <laughs> this, Take that. this is this is one of my, this is one of my pet peeves, dude. This, this is one of my pet peeves during the during the during the era of going for the lightweight rifle. Um, oh my god, that was so stupid. Um, People would say, "Hey, Kalani, man, what kind of what kind of barrel do you shoot?" I'm like, "I'm shooting a 16 inch midweight." And well, you know, I like this, you know, 14 and a half pin pencil barrel. I, like, I don't care what you want. I don't care what you like. I, that wasn't even this conversation. This conversation was, "You wanted my advice." Right. And at this point, door shut. You're you're done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm gonna go get me a drink now. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna. Dude, I'll be the first. I'll be the first person on the range to give anybody whatever they need. The moment they. They they slap me around or I, I'm just I I, I don't have t I don't have that time anymore right you know um, but and there's uh, a certain amount of energy that you have to give up too to continue on that conversation ad nauseum for uh, I'm not long I'm not gonna is. argue I'm 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 not gonna argue equipment um, that's something else that's popped up so many times dude like if I'm sitting there with Cobalt and we're hanging out over dinner you know discussing the shooting sports. Five percent, we talk about equipment. You know, ninety-five mm -hmm. percent, it's all about software. Right. I mean, we all we're all talking game. about the mental game. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and that and that's the difference between uh, you know professionals and amateurs. That amateurs are, are gonna be the guys like, you know, what can I get for you know, what's the what's the best three gun rifle out there that's gonna propel me to the top? I said, there's none of them. I said, dude, I'm shooting the best one in the market right now. It is the hands down the best rifle out there. So if that's what you want, get it. Is it gonna win your championship? No. Not a chance. It it, it it won't. It won't. Um, it certainly won't hurt you at all. all and right. that's and that's what you know. A new shooter should look for is equipment that isn't going to distract them from the hard as heck uh, you know mental game in the yeah. sport. Because I mean, you can you can. I mean, I can roll to the range. Uh, you know, training for twenty days in a row. You know, drop ten thousand rounds um, into the berm. You know, practicing. I got the best equipment out there, which which I do, and. Um, I get I get smacked in the face on the very first stage. None of that matters. Right. That ten thousand rounds down the, is down the down the drain. You know, that six shotgun I shoot is down the drain. Doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. at that point. All that matters is I need to get off my you know get off my butt, get back on my feet, and you know go back to work. But most people won't. They're gonna oh you know what I messed up. I'm done. Let's think about the next match already. You know, or let's think about how fast I can get home and uh, or, you know get back to hotel, pack my bags and. Play the Xbox. Yeah, and, and yeah, exactly. And get out of here. And I mean, this game is 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 mental on all levels. And I guess that's you know one of, one of my best advice. Talking about worst advice is anytime someone tells you to slow down, don't, don't. I mean, I'd rather watch you miss fast and figure out why you're missing fast and why you're missing slowly. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Because hey, man, just slow down. Did <laughs> you slow down? The only thing worse than a miss is a slow miss. <laughs> and I see that all the time. You, you you'll see it, dude. Watch TV, watch YouTube. I mean, watch guys that are all, they're all, they're all ding, 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 bang. Bang. Yo, dude, freaking launch Pull rounds faster. out of that, man. <laughs> you got yourself a freaking 60-round magazine on an AR. Right. I mean, that's awesome, dude. That's, that's you know, I, I don't know. That's, that's where I come from. Um, but, uh, yeah, the best piece of advice is get the equipment that's reliable. Number one, reliable. After that, figure everything else out. But the gun's got to be reliable. Uh, you know, even here, you know, with equipment that I run, 
um, I still test reliability every single day. Mm-hmm. I mean, every time, every day I'm out, I'm, I'm out the range. It's all about reliability, reliability, reliability. Because nobody wants to, I mean, when's the last time someone posted a YouTube of them doing tap rack bang drills on their Glock that doesn't run? Right, I mean, right. No one cares right. about that, dude. So, I mean, you know, you need your gun to run. Um, after that, it's just mental, you know. Uh, my advice to 2009 Kalani would be no expectations and uh, ride those sights, man. It's all about it's, this whole game, no matter what, boils down to accuracy. No matter, no matter how many people are like, oh, dude, man, you're shooting pizza, pizza boxes at 10 yards. I was like, dude, I've missed a lot of pizza boxes at 10 <laughs> yards, dude. Uh, yeah, I've missed, I've missed a whole lot in my career. And uh, uh, you really can't, yeah, you really can't, or I can't, um, you know, tell you enough how important accuracy is in this game, no matter what. And here's it, well, here's another thing too. When you're when you're in the middle of a bad stage, you're gonna have a someday in your career you're gonna have a bad stage. You're gonna have a you're gonna pick up a, a gun off a table and the freaking magazine is gonna fall out, or you're gonna you you can trip going to a helicopter, right? Um, you can't say, all right, I'm gonna make up time on this stage, or I'm gonna I'm gonna game this stage out and you know run outside the fault line, or you know yeah I mean I mean you just you just can't. There's nothing you can do when you're in the midst of a bad stage other than rely upon your accuracy. Right. So, uh, you know, one of the things that you do or one of the things you should do is run plate rack drills where you're running, uh, you know, six. I run 12 targets. When I do plate rack drills, I do 12. And uh, the mental load that happens with you um, is amazing because you'll sit there and, (laughs) dude, the best shooters are going to hit all 12. The worst shooters are going to go, Bing, bing, bang, bang, bing, bing, bang, bang, <laughs> right. bing, bing, bang, bang. Or, or, or they're going to get, you know, seven hits and then 12 misses. There should be no difference between the first shot and the last hit. And they're, they're, it's exact. You're, you're doing the exact same thing. There's, there's nothing different between the first target and the 12th target. Nothing. Right. So except for your head. There's, there's nothing else the same. So, or nothing else different. So um, it's, it's, all, it's all mental. And, you know, when you're running play rack drills and, and you start throwing mics in the middle of it, you can't speed up. You can't speed. You just need to go back and just keep. I mean, just worry about that accuracy. Fall back on the accuracy. That's that's the number one skill in this game for sure. Well, Kalani, we uh, we've we've covered a lot of topics in the little time <laughs> that we've talked here, man. Yeah, I, sorry. No, to- no, it's totally cool, man. And I know the the audience is gonna dig dig this as well. Unfortunately, we're we're kind of working toward the uh, the end of our time here. Cool. And. Uh, I have a couple last questions for you. Okay. One, where do you see the sport of three-gun headed? Um, it's really – it's – I think it's still moving forward for sure. Um, and the reason is uh, is because the influx of, of new shooters. Mm-hmm. And as long as we keep getting new shooters into the game, um, the game will uh, will always have this feeling of, of, of freshness. And uh, so I'm, I'm a huge proponent of bringing out – your friends, bring out your spouses, bring out your family members, uh, get them out to the range, and, uh, you know, get them shooting. Uh, the beauty of Three Gun is that there's a match for any style you want. Yeah, um, for sure. So, you know, you don't got to go beat yourself up and do do a match that you don't like. You know, if it's a fast match and you don't want to move, then then don't do it, you know. And, and, and uh, if you're super, you know, if you feel that you're, you're, uh, you're best uh, – you know, at, uh, your best skill set in the game right now is fast footwork. Then, then go to the fast matches. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you know, go to wherever you're gonna. You know, you're 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 gonna get that uh, that quick return. You know what I mean? I mean, no one wants to go to match. It's like, oh, it's 45th, man. That was you know that was hard. And when you can go to a next match two weeks later, where you're gonna finish in the top 20. You know, and uh, this game is this game is a uh, it's ever it's ever evolving right now, and. Uh, um, jump on YouTube, jump on the social media, you know, follow all the top shooters and uh, 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 the – Listen uh, to the three-gun show. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> listen to three. Well, especially now that I have my own episode. <laughs> you should probably listen to it twice. Listen to it twice. <laughs> download it twice, dude. Delete it and then download it again. But, yeah, dude, I mean, I guess, you know, that's my point, though, is that there's so many avenues right now uh, um, of getting knowledge that wasn't there previously. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so sick. And, uh, um, and almost every top shooter out there will – well, bend over backwards for for any other shooter out there. So I mean, I've shot two nationals go not this nationals, but last nationals. I shot with uh, everybody else's guns. <laughs> I mean, I didn't yeah. shoot with any of my own guns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that now. It takes a village for a Kalani <laughs> yeah, to look. shoot. I remember that. You said that. <laughs> yeah, holy dude. cow! I shot the whole match with other other quit. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Yeah, so, I mean, that just happens. I mean, and th 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 that was literally maybe 30 mis minutes before the match started. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Michael was acting kind of funny. Let me check it out. Okay, it doesn't work. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, it's not reliable. Right. But that thing, that thing will, you know, knock a tick off a freaking Nat's ass at 100 yards, but it didn't work. So, at that wow. point, you know, you got to. You got to do what you got to do. So I shot, you know, Keith's gun. This is all wonkety weird, dude. Keith, Keith, ch Keith, <laughs> he chases gear, dude. And, and, <laughs> and it's funny because I'll say that, and uh, he's the only guy who I will allow chase gear because, dude, guy's always right. Yeah. That boy's always right, man. I mean, he is, he is at the forefront of innovation um, in both technique and hardware in this sport. So. Uh, you know, I'm I'm real privileged to uh, uh, to be his friend and his teammate. So, awesome. and he intro he introduced me. Oh, he's horrible. He introduced me to uh, a thing called A5 Wagyu beef, <laughs> cooked on a stone. The most expensive bad habit I've ever gotten. Now, if you so. yeah, so we you had that for dinner just a little uh -huh. bit ago. Uh -huh. You let me try a little piece, mm -hmm. and if you had told me what the cost was on that before <laughs> I tried it, I would have said, no, sir. <laughs> I am not worthy enough to eat It's that. expensive. <laughs> it's, it's, it's about as expensive as, like, your you know, monthly rent for your apartment. But yeah, it's, it's almost like cocaine. Like, I have never had, like, a great cocaine <laughs> habit. Never Which had a bad one either. <laughs> but, but, but it seems like or that could be as expensive. When I, when I leave Las Vegas, um, I'm going to be thinking about those, about that beef. <laughs> Nice. Dude, it's, it's, it's definitely pretty good. So Nice. Well, uh, so other than the beef, <laughs> let's, uh, let's give a final thought to the audience here. Some, if you could leave them with, like, one message, one piece of advice, something for them to mull over, what would it be? Oh, wow. Um, man, I've, I feel like I've given – too much advice, honestly. <laughs> this, Dude, this is this, gold, man. This uh, this episode, but I'm I looking mean, at my audio cool. engineer. I'm like, you better be getting <laughs> this. <laughs> um, my advice, from what I understand nowadays, uh, again, is to enjoy right now. Don't don't be that dude who's working hard at night. You know, every night in the garage, saying, you know what, a year from now I'll be better. It doesn't matter. Get out there and shoot. Get out there right now and enjoy the day. Enjoy the food. Enough fast food, man. We got we got to get rid of these fast food restaurants and have people with like good palates. <laughs> Chick Fil A. <laughs> well, okay, that's different. <laughs> that's, that's that's actually pretty decent. But um, no, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely enjoy yourself. Um, you know, enjoy your time. Um, um, and live in the moment. Not only like in a in a broader sense, but also in a specific sense where if you're shooting, you know, don't worry about the next target. Don't worry about that next stage. Just worry about that target that you have to neutralize right in front of you that's that's all that matters at that at that specific moment in time um just worry about that so dude that's that's great stage advice good uh three gun advice and also great life advice cool man oh man that was deep <laughs> deep well Kalani, Rocky, man, beef i i have uh i've really enjoyed you know having dinner with you today this talk that we just had now mm -hmm. and the last few months getting to uh to know you better you know from from like uh from the perspective of like this is a guy I see on Three Gun Nation mm -hmm. to now being able to have like these deeper conversations with you and to be able to share this with the Three Gun Show audience, I thank you. I appreciate your time. This thank has been you. a lot of fun, Kalani. All right, Dave. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you too. Yeah, man. All right, brother. All right, guys. Before you head off, be sure to check out the show notes at threegunshow.com slash episode 111 for podcast support links and for show notes including links to the registration for the 2017 Colorado Three Gun Championships presented by Burris Optics, which opens up February 6th. As a reminder, when you sign up using the code 3GS2017, you not only get to shoot the match, but you also get entered into a drawing for a prize package from the good folks at Odin Works, including a handguard of your choice, a magazine release, plus a shirt and a ball cap. Now, I'm throwing in a, a Three Gun Show t-shirt and a Laser Edge magazine as well. Uh, over $350 worth of cool gear, and it could be yours just by signing up for the match using the code 3GS2017. And if you need anything to get ready for the 2017 Three Gun season, check out Odinworks because we support the companies that support Three Gun, and, uh, and Odinworks definitely supports Three Gun. As always, thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'm Dave Hartman, and I'll see you on the range.
finished. Unload show clear.